How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to take a look back at two games in the Champions League last night. And last piece of news involves Arsenal and former player Emmanuel Petit has said the club is being run like a holiday camp. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is last night's Champions League games and um, it's advantage Chelsea. One foot in the semi-finals of the Champions League. A 2-0 win away from home against Porto. Um, Mason Mount and Ben Chilwell with um, what looks you know, like a very, very crucial goal. Five minutes from time. Um, you know, going into the second leg, 1-0, it's always dangerous. Um, but yeah, that second goal is absolutely massive and I can't see Porto turning this one round. I honestly can't. I think that Chelsea are as good as in the semi-finals already. Um, they will have to be careful, of course, in the second leg um, because you, know, you don't want to get caught in that precarious situation that you sometimes find teams in when they win a first leg. You kind of don't know whether to stick or twist. And um, you look at it and you think, right, the job's done. Don't need to do too much. Don't overexert ourselves and just make sure we do things professionally. But the issue is, is that when you try to play at one level, if you do need to raise the gears, it's very difficult to do that. So it'd be interesting to see what Thomas Tuchel does uh, with the second leg and how um, he gets Chelsea, you know, properly fired up and they don't make any mistakes. Um, you only have to look at Europa League games, for example, with Spurs. And I know it's the Europa League and I know this is the Champions League and everything else. But the point still remains that, you know, it's two legs and it's not over. Um, so, yeah, Chelsea will have to be careful, um, but my opinion is um, it's done. And I think that um, if they get the first goal in particular, um, you know, in the second leg, yeah, it's just going to go through the motions for Porto. They're not going to be turning this one around. And, um, yeah, it's a good victory for Chelsea. Um, last game, I was looking forward to to see in this game and it didn't disappoint Bayern Munich 2 Paris Saint-Germain 3 and it is most definitely Paris Saint-Germain with the advantage that's three away goals that's mad going to the Allianz and scoring three away goals Paris Saint-Germain actually took a 2-0 lead Mbappe within three minutes um, Marquinhos on 28 um, but then uh, Chupa Moting just before half time um, and Bayern Munich, yeah, they come out of the second half very good. Thomas Muller equalises, but then Mbappe eight minutes later with the killer goal. And um, I think Bayern Munich's biggest issue and the reason why, you know, this has probably come at the wrong time for them is the injury to Lewandowski and... Um, you're losing a world-class player, his goals and everything else. And yeah, I know that um, Chupa Moting scored, but he's not Lewandowski, is he? And um, yeah, I don't think Paris Saint-Germain are too fearful of him, you know, in comparison. So when you look at it in that respect, um, <laughs> yeah. You can see why, um, you know, PSG weren't too, you know, overly fussed, shall we say. But that's a brilliant win for them. They're going to want to go one better because obviously, you know, last season getting to the final, losing. But they're going to want to, you know, go and rectify that. Um, and it was Munich they actually lost to as well in the final. But, um, yeah, this was a more entertaining, you know, game than that one, that's for sure. But, um yeah, the thing is with PSG, man, you never know. And the other thing is as well, do not write off Bayern Munich because they are the type of team 
that can go, you know, to Paris and score three goals themselves. Maybe not so without Lewandowski. Yeah, maybe, but they're definitely a team that can do it. And PSG, they've had first leg results where you sit there and go, okay, tie's done. And then in the second, you're like, oh, wow, it's a bit nervy. You remember the Barcelona one? That's a big one in particular. Um, and that was ridiculous because I think they won the first leg 4-0, wasn't it? So, um, But like I said, I think the advantage with this is that they've got the free away goals. Um, you know, Bayern Munich, if they win 1-0 in Paris, then that's not enough. Um, they've got to win 2-0. Oh, it's going to be tough. Very tough. Three away goals, man. But that's brilliant from PSG. And um, yeah, I think that the winner of this game, for me, they'll go on to win the Champions League. Um, and yeah, this ties in the balance. It really is. Most teams, you'd look at that and you say, yes, yeah, done. But it's Bayern Munich. You just never know. They've got the capabilities, like I said. So it's going to be a very, very interesting second leg. Uh, last piece of news involves Arsenal and Mikel Arteta has hit back at claims. Um, he is running a holiday camp by insisting that anyone lacking the passion to play for Arsenal will be turfed out. Uh, former Gunners legend Emmanuel Petit um, slammed his old club who are 10th in the Premier League as a retreat where old players just go for a vacation. Um, Petit, who won the double with Arsenal in 1998, also claimed that the younger players are the ones showing passion, fight and aggression. Um, asked about Petit's criticism, Arteta said he knows the club well. He was here in their most successful years and has that opinion. I'm here to change that opinion. Um, I am here to give my evaluation of what I see every day and where we are and I know uh, where we are and where we want to go. We have to respect that. So, look, the thing is with this, I think Petit's very right in some of the things that he says that for too many years, Arsenal was run as a holiday camp. And I think that goes right back to the Wenger days, um, you know, and then the way the players just took hold of Unai Emery and everything else. It was very much like that. Uh, go through the motions, get a fat wage, but not really contribute to the club and what goes on on the pitch. But um, yeah, look, Mikel's saying all the right things, but it's time to deliver. They've got to go out and do it. And, um, you know, for me, the, the big thing is the Europa League is do or bust for us. And, um, you know, this could be something that goes a long way to the future of Mikel Arteta. It may get taken out of his hands at some point. Um, but I genuinely believe that he's going to be the man for Arsenal Football Club. And, you know, he will turn all of this around and eventually get the squad that he wants and the players that he wants and, you know, the style that he wants and everything else. But ultimately, like I said, you've got to deliver. Um, and the first thing that we need to deliver is the Europa League. But we will wait and see what happens. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video. And I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.